Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Kitchen time. I'm going to do these three Pafio Pedalums together. Um, before I start, I would like to say I do not grow Pafio Pedalums that well. So taking any advice from this video, be it on your own head. <laughs> this is what I do and in the last year or so it's worked better than it has before. But the main reason I was failing with these was not changing the media. Um, and because of the media that I use um, and the fact that most Pafio Pedalums do not like any form of acidity, some do, but most don't, um, I was losing roots and without a good root system, you know, these don't grow that well. And they're quite difficult to recover once they've lost a root system because they grow their roots quite slowly. Once a root starts growing, if it's happy, it grows quite vigorously. But note singular one they don't grow masses and masses of roots like a lot of other orchids um, a couple of these are miniatures um, this one isn't this one hasn't actually bloomed for a while and it has got some roots in the pot I'm not sure how many but we'll have a look um, this has actually been registered this cross it's um Paphio Pedalum Warden crossed with Raisin Wine um, and that has actually got a proper name and somebody did tell me once and I forgot to write it down so uh, lost but that's as it, as it was sold to me um, let's see what we've got not a lot I suspect knowing my paths well I've taken them out of the pot with worse root systems than that I must admit But that's a lost root there, that's all soggy. What else have we got here? Ooh, we've got a branching root there, that's good. Now, I'm certainly any root that is attached to a piece of bark stays with its piece of bark. I'm not attempting to mess about. Now, that's a firm root, and that's a firm root, and boy, does that smell of mushrooms well overdue. This is the problem I think I've been having is I just have not refreshed the media quick enough and because these like to stay moist all the time you know I'm, I'm doing my own damage. Anyway that root's got to come off that one's well gone. Come on off you come thank you. Yeah when they go like that they just fall apart worth keeping and that one's detached so even though no oh no that is soggy so that doesn't leave a lot does it it does in fact leave one root to the branch and I was just going to say and a new root just starting but that's a new root that failed so we haven't got much to work with there have we but nonetheless we'll stick it in a pot we'll get it a little bit deeper in its media and we'll see if it'll grow some more roots because what it's got at the moment see in actual fact this root is soggy that is not a happy root that bit is though we we'll take that bit off no point in potting it if it's got a dodgy root it will rot this bit's not brilliant that might recover it might not but it's not good Put that to one side. Right, let's just have a look at this little one. This is one of the ones that Hannah tried, she got from Burnham's. Um, she saw one in one of their terrariums in bloom and just had to have it. So we asked and they had one. Um, when she went in hospital and I took over all her plants, they'd been neglected quite badly and her um, two little Pafio pedalums that she gave me to look after had no roots. Um, they'd been left dry for so long. Um, they were on the verge of death. But I could see down the side of the pot that this one has at least grown a root. <laughs> Singular. Yeah, so you can see what I've got here. I've got an old dead root and a root that is okay. And that's all I've got to work with again. So singular. But this has had it, this one. That would be probably what it had when I repotted it. So we'll get rid of that. That leaves me with that. Um, 
it's not an active growing tip but it's an active root so hopefully it can still feed the plant. The plant is in vegetative growth it's actually grown these two leaves and this one during the winter so it has been growing despite not having a very good root system but this one is that a new root? Yes this one has a new root coming out so hopefully that will get going when it's repotted. I don't need to worry about getting the tags muddled up because these three plants are quite different. <coughs> and this little miniature, um, oh I forgot to say what they were, that one was. That one was Paphiopedalum Thompson. Um, this one is um, Delanati, Delanati I, and it's the Vinny colour type. Um, and th this one literally had no roots and how the hell it stayed alive I really don't know but all I did was put it in some sphagnum moss and um, whether it's actually grown any roots or not I don't know but it has grown new leaves so it's, it's not dead but I doubt if there's much to work with here if anything the hell this has stayed alive I don't know but there is a root there is a root there and a stump of another one so it has grown something under the ground in its moss but uh, see now this one because it was planted in pure moss I've got to go very careful with this one because if I put it straight in my normal mix um, it will have a transition problem because it's only had moss <coughs> Nonetheless, <coughs> we'll see what we can do. Um, in practical terms, I don't hold out a huge amount of hope for any of these, but um, all you can do is try. Um, my other three are two are in bloom and one's got a large bud about to open, so they'll get left and done separately once the bloomings are over. But um, yeah, I'll see what I can do with those three, so I'll have a little bit of a tidy up sort out some pots and um, some media and then we'll get them quickly potted up. I'll be back. Okay we've had a bit of a problem in the break. Um, the spotlight immediately above me has just gone and I haven't got a spare. And um, we have an ongoing problem because I thought well I'll take one of the other spotlights out and I can't unscrew them. They're in there so tight they won't come out. Which means when they go, which they will do eventually, I can't get the old bulb out to put a new one in. So I'm going to have to break it so that I can get some pliers on the base and turn it. They just will not unscrew. Flipping cheap rubbish. <laughs> That'll teach me to buy home base own bulbs instead of paying for a decent one like Philips or something. Anyway, the camera will adjust so it's not... For you, it's not a big deal, but for me, it's like working in the flipping dark here. I feel like getting a torch out. Anyway, um, these are quick repots. It's not like we've got a lot of roots to work with, is it? So um, Now, I'm using, for the first one, um, the one that came out of pure sphagnum moss. The mix is heavy on the moss. And um, I've lost the plant there. Here he is. Um, I mean, this is a nice little plant. I mean, the leaves on this are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't want to lose it, but, you know, I haven't got much to work with here. It's up to the plant to, you know, to get some new roots going, basically. I don't know whether actually taking off this dead bit around the stem would help. It might do. Anyway, I don't want to go too mad. It's a delicate little plant. So, um, what I'm going to do with this is the media with lots of moss is going in on top of the roots and then when I get near the base of the plant it's just going to get bark so that round the actual base of the plant is not wet um, and these don't need packing in tight quite honestly it needs coming up a bit in the pot as well which means I can get some more media in um, these roots might look sturdy but they will break um, if you, and they will compress, they will crush. So you don't need to go too mad with the old uh, pressure. I'm just hoping that, yes it will, that the two leaves at the bottom of the pot will just sit on the pot and that will just help stabilise it. Right, so I just need to get some more media with moss over the top of the roots. 
and then I'm going to top that off with just bark and um, it should keep the base of the plant a bit drier. You know, if it had a large root system, it probably wouldn't matter so much. But you know, this is a very poor root system, and this is this is what I live with with my Paphio pedalums. I very rarely get one with a really good root system. I know at least one of them has, because um, I can see it through the side of the pot. Um, and the other thing, um, I mean, Ed pots his in open mesh baskets. Um, if I did that, I'd be watering them very, very frequently, and they would dry more frequently in between and go totally dry in this bark. So I'm not happy about doing that, which is why I use a mix of small bark and moss um, and, a, and a closed pot, basically. Um, that's not the problem with me not growing them well. The problem is, has been just leaving them in the pot too long and letting the media go off. And obviously, because I've got moss in my media, it's going to go off quicker than it would do if it was just bark. So, uh, you know, I'm cutting my own throat by not keeping up with the repotting. And um, last time I did a few, I thought, well, that's it. That's the last time they're ever going to get left any more than 12 months. So these are some of the ones where I repot in spring because I'm going to do it every single year. These don't seem to mind a repot once they've got a root system established. So that's all that's going to get. Um, it's a bit of media a little bit higher up the plant than it was. And we'll see what that does. So that's that little one. Next is this little one. That's down to one root. The possibility of another one just starting. In fact, that is a new root. So obviously that needs to be in the media along with the one it's already got. That'll just about fit in there. This is the problem you get, or you can get, is that um, because the roots are quite brittle, you know, they won't take much bending at all. They'll just snap. Um, when you've got a long root like that, you end up often having to have a much bigger pot than you really need be just to get that root in. Now if you look now, because I've put a bit of media in there, that, that root won't go down as far as I want it to, so I'm going to have to take some media out. So that root is going to be virtually sat on the bottom of the pot. But I need to look at the base of the plant. That's the bit I'm working with, and that's the bit where the little new root is. And on this plant, the, the root it's got is okay, and the new root it's got is its hope for the future. That's its progress. If that new root can push on nicely, then the plant will do okay. But I'm going to have to come up quite high in the pot to get to that new root. don't need much pressing down, these roots will crush. But I need that new root in the media, not on it, in it. And if you see, that means my media is going to have to come right up near the top of the pot, which means when I water, um, some of the media is going to come out over the top. But it needs to stay there at least until that new root points downwards into the media. Once it starts to grow and gets into the media, if the very base of it is uh, not quite in the media, it won't matter. It's the, it's the growing point and the main root that needs to be in that media. So I'm going to have to come up quite high. That doesn't mean to say it has to be packed tightly around that root, but it does need to be there. And that little root's important. It's worth taking a bit of care and making sure that it is in some moss. So this one's got moss around the base of the plant because that's where the new root is. I don't want to go up too high, but it is the way with monopodials, the roots, each time a new root comes out, it does tend to be higher up the base than the previous one. I mean, sometimes you'll get one come out each side at the same height up the plant, but um, often they will start to progress upwards. Right, so that's got moss around the base of the plant where the root is. I've just about got enough room to top that with a little bit of bark. I won't be able to get much on this time. But that will help 
because there's something sitting on that moss it'll help keep the moss moist which is round the base of the plant where the new root is so that's about as good as that one can get I think that's not bad and that, you know that bark some of that bark will probably wash off when I water it unless I dunk it but uh, I don't tend to do that with these right so that's that little one done now this last one um, has a root that goes round in a circle, that's where it grew round the pot. But I can't bend it enough to get it in a small pot, so it's going to have to go in a pot roughly the same size as the one it came out of. So that can go in that one. Um, yeah, that would be okay. And this, this will need a reasonable amount of media, but if I can get away with it, I'm going to plant this one a bit lower in the pot so that it's um, it's not actually in a deep media run. Some of these do grow quite long roots. And, you know, when you get them going, they really do take off. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen some roots going round the pot three times, you know, long roots. But obviously when they grow round the pot like that, repotting them's easy. If you give them a really deep pot and you want to change your mind and have a shallower pot, <laughs> that's not so easy because they'll break. Probably put too much in again, although this root sort of comes back up on itself, so it goes down and then it comes back up round, and I'm hoping to just coil it like that, a bit like a snake. Um, which I can do. And then I'll just keep this one a little lower in the pot compared with the other two anyway. No air gaps with these, make sure your media goes around all points of contact with the roots. These roots are quite different to uh, other orchid roots. They're covered in little hairs. They're more like a traditional plant, really, you know, if you sort of look at them close up. But um, it's those hairs that enable them to um, absorb the moisture. As I said, more like a, a normal plant than your normal vellum and covered orchid roots that we're used to dealing with with most others. So these are different. Um, Some people class them as terrestrials. Um, some people say semi-terrestrials, but given the variety of places they grow, I don't think one category fits all. I really don't. Um, so I just want a little bit more moss in case any new roots come out at the top of that base. Um, yeah, so you know, some of them do grow on sort of rocky, mossy outcrops um, as lithophytes. You know, they're not really growing in traditional media. Some of them grow on the forest floor. Well, those are terrestrials, at least. And um, there are a few that actually grow at the base of trees, so they are actually growing like an epiphyte, even though they're low down in the forest. So of uh, quite a lot of variety in, in, in their positions where they grow. So it's difficult to categorize them as one or the other. They vary. But certainly those that grow on the forest floor would be more akin to a more acidic mix and those that grow on those limestone rocky outcrops do not like acidity in the media, they like an alkaline mix. Which, <laughs> a mix like that is never going to be alkaline, so you have to artificially deal with it by adding some um, dolomite lime or some people use crushed egg shells or oyster shells. There's various ways of raising the um, alkalinity in a pot. Um, without changing your media. Because, I mean, if you're going to use bark or bark and moss or just moss, you're going to have an acidic media whether you like it or not. So you have to deal with it. Right, that's you done. So that's those three done. Um, I've got three more to do because they're all getting done, um, but I won't film the others because that's just a repeat. I might just film one of them. I'll <laughs> film one with a decent root system just to show that I have got some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but those are the strugglers, you know, those are the three that have been a problem for some time, they're still a problem. But all you can do is try. So uh, I'll stick their, uh, stick their existing tags back in. So that's the um, Warden Cross with uh, Raisin Wine. Uh, where's my other two tags gone? That's the um, Delanatii, which is the dark little miniature 
that means the other one must be the Thompson. And we'll stick that one back in. Of course, I put those tags in the wrong way round. It's no good having them. Well, actually, it doesn't matter, quite honestly. When it's a small pot like that, having the writing on the inside of the pot or the outside of the pot doesn't actually matter that much because wherever it is, you can see it. But with a stonking great oncidium, you need the writing on the outside. Okay, so that's those three little ones done. They'll get a water now and um, I'll have to keep my eye on them for a while because it's new bark they will dry quite quickly so I'll keep my eye on them so I was just going to top dress that one keep the moss covered it just helps it stay moist you know it's the dry bark on the top then doesn't mean it needs watering it just means it's the dry bark on the top not the actual media the roots are in that helps keep the moisture in the pot Certainly helps while this uh, bark's new because it dries pretty damn quick. Right, that's those three done. Um, I'll see you next time. As I say, don't take this as a culture or care video because it's not. If it was, then these would be really strong, healthy plants with really good root systems. <laughs> so this is some struggling plants with me doing somewhere near it. So, as I said, don't necessarily do what I do. <laughs> see you next time. Bye for now.